Wall Street's biggest bull says it is time to bet big on one particular sector. Tony Dwyer, chief market strategist at Canaccord Genuity, joins us now for a special edition of the Fast Pitch. We'll call him a relief pitcher for now and a closer, depending on how this all goes. So, Tony, give us your best shot. <laughs> All right, good deal, Mel. So the number one question I'm getting from investors is our productivity trade, and more specifically, the financial sector is not working. And we found that now is the time that you want to buy it. We have very strong earnings growth. We're going to be going, we're going to be going 25% higher in earnings. Now think about this. In the first quarter, earnings were supposed to be up 24%. They ended up 30%. We have easier regulation. They just President Trump signed into law a repeal or a softening of the Volcker rule, which will now enable the banks to start trading for their own account. Also, you've got a much lower regulatory burden and compliance burden on the smaller banks that are no longer considered too big to fail. And lastly, and most importantly for us, history. The yield curve is flattening, and that's making everybody think that, wow, this is a good time to get out of financials relative to the market, but that's not true. When you look at this, You've got 60 basis points on the 210 spread down to 40 basis points. Wouldn't you think that that's going to create underperformance for the S&P financial sector going forward? Heck no. You had a monster move up after you hit 40 basis points until the initial inversion. Think about it. The initial inversion was there. You had, look at that relative performance. The S&P 500 during this time frame was up 7%. The financial sector was up 13%. I think Tony should come over for the question part of this. Yeah, so come on over, Tony. Right, Michelle will bring the chair in again. A two for right. Michelle she does tonight. does a great job with the chair. Heavy <laughs> duty. Right. <laughs> um, what, what, what was the time frame in terms of how three much months. time? Three months, you said? Mel, it was three months where okay. you went, again, you were below 40 basis points on the yield curve, the 210 spread. Everybody, I went back and looked at news items during the time, and people are saying, this is so bad for the banks. Their net interest margin is going to decline. They had gotten oversold, similar to now, and then you just lift it off the market and the financials. Uh, Tony, you mentioned the repeal of uh, some of the stuff in Volcker, so that means yeah. that these tra uh, companies can trade for their own account. How important is that to this bullish thesis, and what makes you think that these companies are set up to trade the way they did for their own account in the last decade You know that drove this profit growth in this decade? Dan, it's a great question. And, and I'm not going to say that the banks, I'm not a bank analyst, so I'm not going to say that banks are going to make X amount of money, but they have the opportunity to. Remember, the banks are going to be permanently um, valued like they were utilities because the regulators took away their ability to make money. That ability to make money is game on. The, the capital markets activity is terrific. Now you can actually provide liquidity to the market. God forbid you have a buyer and an illiquid tape. You didn't have that opportunity before, so I think it's a really important point. But most importantly, for the smaller banks, you're no longer too big to fail. You don't have that cost for compliance and other, other things like that. Yeah, Tony, do you, do you see that capital return issue also for banks, whether it's dividends or whether it's actually being able to buy back stock, um, getting a different type of investor on board with the banks that really weren't playing them, any of the div guys? or I mean, that to me seems a catalyst that people aren't playing. Th thanks, Tim. I forgot about that one. That is a really big deal where you can actually loosen up the capital restrictions or the capital requirements mm -hmm. so that some of these banks that, again, were too big to fail or significantly finance, financial institutions, mm -hmm. important financial institutions, they can now, instead of keeping that on reserve, they can actually give it back to the shareholders. They can increase their buybacks. And, and a big part of the reason that the financials went, they were supposed to be up 24% year over year in earnings growth, and they are up 30 because of the capital returns and the yep. buybacks. It's such a big deal. I think we're going to vote now. No more questions. Time to vote. See what these guys here on the desk <laughs> are doing. Idea. Are you buying or selling Tony's pitch on financials? Guy, I'm going to kick it off with yeah, you. Yeah, that's a good idea, Mel. I, I put on my little board Tony is money. He's sort of the <laughs> Alan Wabowski of fast money. I <laughs> know you don't know what? who that is. Yeah. The who? Google it. <laughs> Al Wabowski with an H. The mad, mad Hungarian. Hungarian. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, you're welcome. I think Sam. Tony, uh, he made a very compelling case. I just, we have night in after night, we have somebody come on and say buy the banks and they don't go up. They neutral is not a choice, Dan. It is neutral because I'm not saying to sell them here, okay? But you're not, you're but not, not buying. buying. Okay, you're not buying. I'm just, I'm just not convinced, okay. although right. you made a great well, argument. Well, Dan, that's apparently not good enough. I mean, it's a good point. <laughs> neutral from Dan is bullish as a guess. Um, BK. <laughs> For me, it's a big buy. Wow. I mean, wow. I, listen, Tony's been spot on for the last two years. Why would you go against this guy now? 
<laughs> that makes me probably the best yeah. short. <laughs> I'm, I'm a buyer, oh, nice. Tony. I'm a buyer, Look Tony. Look at that. Look at that. That is some Tony. artwork. Thank you. That is some nice yeah. artwork. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.